If we look at the, the word, so what's the word today? Okay, so we need to get some energy going. There's still people up in the room. There's still people sitting out there. They should be in here. Their butts should be in the seats. So when I say kick some, you say ask. Okay, it's practice. When I say kick some, you say ask. When I say kick some, you say ask. When I say kick some, you say ask. All right, kick some. Ask. All right, we'll get started here. So in looking at the word ask and our philosophy, you can ask a question. So we have an M&M &M principle. We've got to find a mentor, and we've got to be part of a mastermind. So we call it the M&M &M principle. You guys want some M&Ms? <laughs> got to catch them. We'll have lots of these back there in the back. So you have to have a mentor and you have to mastermind group. I've had the opportunity to be in several philosophy mastermind groups of my career. I remember the first one, I was just literally out of school a short period of time and Dr. Sigafoos, some of you might not know who that is, Dr. Sigafoos had his first gathering in Aspen. Now at that time my wife and I could barely even afford our rent, let alone to go to Aspen for three days. And so we put a goal board up. And about a year later, we went to this event, and it was the first one. So I get there, and I don't even know who these people are. Who's Reggie Gold? You know, I, it's like I, I was—I came from a, a, a physical therapy background. I worked in spinal cord trauma, so my philosophy was weak. But as we're sitting there and we're talking about the miracles and the adjustments, Roy Sweat, Atlas Orthogonal Technique was there. The DE guys, all these guys talking about chiropractic, it started to fester up inside you and start to get how powerful it is. And a few years later, we went with Dr. Charles Ward, and we went to the BJ Mansion, and we spent three days in a snowstorm in Davenport, Iowa, with just 30 of us, and Virgil String, who headed up the philosophy for Palmer Chiropractic College, and we talked about chiropractic. We adjusted each other on the horsehair adjusting table that BJ adjusted his patients. We opened up his library, touched the books that he wrote, looked at the books that he read, a few years later, we went to his house in Sarasota, and Sid Williams' house was right next door to it so he could be close to the source. We're losing a lot of that. I'm, I'm so stoked that uh, Paul's giving away the green books this weekend because we need to get immersed in that. But it's not just reading it by yourselves. If we have a mastermind, our core Sacramento group has been uh, together now for 10 years. We've had over 100 speakers come in, and we talk, and, we, and then we mastermind about chiropractic after. It's important to get a mentor, get a mastermind partner, become part of a mastermind group. So you're my mastermind group for the weekend, okay? Now give yourself a round of applause, okay? So this means you need to connect with each other. This is not like going from you know, a herd of cattle. I want you to connect. Connect with another office. You don't, if you're sitting next to them, say hi to them. Introduce yourself. You're all brothers and sisters of chiropractic. We need to get more connected. We're a bunch of stallions running our own different ways, and we as chiropractors need to have that mastermind thought process in our daily life. And have a mentor, because it does get pretty tough out there. Now the questions that we ask. So if I say kick some, you say? Yes. If I say kick some? Yes. Good. So the quality of our questions determine the quality of our life. Um, I had the amazing opportunity in the late 80s going to UPW weekend with Tony and uh, I was at this seminar and uh, he's talking about, he's very pro-chiropractic if you, if you don't know that, and so I went up to Lauren Slocum who was running the event and says, who's adjusting Tony this weekend? She goes, oh nobody, he has his own chiropractor. So two hours later she comes up to me and goes, Tony's having a problem with his jaw, can you work on that? And I said, yeah, but was I a little bit nervous? Absolutely. So after the fire walk, we went up to his room at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I ended up adjusting him that weekend. Then he flew me to the competitive edge the next day in Vegas. And then for several years, I would adjust him at different UPW weekends. This was a picture. I, I keep journals every year for the last 40 years. This picture was taken 25 years ago today in Fiji. So he asked me to be his chiropractor for his first date with destiny that he did in Fiji. And so I had the opportunity to ask him questions. And he's a very profound guy. He gets the organizing principle thing. So 
We did, we would, I'd get him adjusted, we'd do this little hike up to the top of the mountain, look at the ocean, and he'd start his day. And I asked him, so what's the one question that you ask yourself that keeps driving you? And he says, without hesitation, what don't I know? He says, you have to stay hungry to find the answers. And that sticks in my brain because, you know, it keeps you going. If you're burnt out, you're kind of stuck, what don't you know? And how can you actually keep improving the quality of your delivery, of your adjustment, your skill, your knowledge, and your knowing? This is a lifelong, I mean, I don't think there's enough uh, years to live through all the things that we can learn and grow and thrive in chiropractic. So at Sigafus's seminar, I asked him, and he said, to, we want to preserve the future, but we must create our future. And the only way that chiropractic will be around in the future is if we stay rooted in the philosophy. Have you ever been tested before? Your philosophy, your skill, your art, somebody beats you up, maybe some attorney or an MD or a patient or whatever. I'm sure we've all had that numerous times. But when your faith in chiropractic is tested, it's hard. On November 2nd, 2002, as Matt said, my wife and I were in a horrific helicopter crash. Everything was going great. Practices perfect, two, two offices, and all of a sudden, we hit the ground with such horrific force that the tail section of the helicopter was found 200 yards down in the canyon. We were up on a photo shoot, my wife's a photographer, and we wanted to get some, we went, this is actually on our property, Port Tahoe, and it was pilot error. And it's, you knew, we had about 20 seconds, we knew we were gonna hit. And I just closed my eyes and prayed, and I literally felt like a white bubble surrounded us. And I know that, that the reason I'm still here is because I have a lot more to do. And we gotta take every day, because we don't know when that's gonna end. So my wife was on the outside, it pulled her in. We hit so hard, and uh, we knew almost within a couple days, uh, uh, we had MRIs, CAT scans, neurologists, uh, that she had a traumatic brain injury. Within a few days, she could barely talk, she could barely walk, and our whole life has changed. One week before this, she's speaking, she was the head CA trainer for the waiting list practice with CJ Mertz. She's speaking to a thousand people, and the next week she can't even walk or talk. Why I went on a worldwide search, the best way is to treat traumatic brain injury. Everything. The neurologist said, you can't adjust her. It will be detrimental and potentially fatal. So a neurologist puts his BS, his belief system on me, <laughs> and that BS festered up for a couple weeks because we, I mean, I was injured, she was injured, we didn't know what was going on. Two practices running. And so what happened is uh, I literally went on a worldwide search finding all the different ways from nutrition to Ayurvedic uh, practice to um, acupuncture, every type of ways to stimulate the brain. Neuroplasticity wasn't even a word when we hit, okay? So it's new. When I worked in spinal cord trauma and physical therapy, we thought that once you have a, a brain injury, it's, it's all over. It's just gonna deteriorate, and that's not true. And chiropractic is such a big part of this. So after a couple weeks, my own innate said, what are you doing? And I got her adjusted and started to do some cranial work. And within about a 12 month period of time, she made almost a complete recovery. It actually allowed her to go on. She's an Ayurvedic practitioner now. Uh, she studied her Deepak Chopra. So we use those principles for our brain health uh, uh, lifestyle changes in our office. And Chiropractic is the way to make the difference. This one slide is the one slide that you just really need to, to know. It's simple, it's pure. The brain communicates to the body through the, through the safety pin cycle, the normal complete cycle. So when we make an adjustment, realize you are affecting the brain. The afferent and efferent uh, neurology of the body, you are always affecting the brain. So I know in our program, we know exactly what level of the spine affects what level of the brain. If your upper cervical is off, it's affecting the prefrontal cortex, it's affecting your emotional centers, it's affecting your vestibular mechanism, your balance. 
So if you're adjusting the upper cervical area, you're affecting one of the most important parts of your brain. So realize what you do is freaking awesome and powerful. So when I say kick some, you say yes. When I say kick some, you say yes. Get deeper into the philosophy. It was a couple years before we even shared this with anybody. We were in our own little bubble trying to heal from this traumatic brain injury. We were at an inner circle meeting with Mark Victor Hansen and Robert Allen, and we had to share a story. So the first time we'd shared publicly that we'd have this problem, and you know, because we gotta be strong, we never gotta be perfect. Well, when we did that, I shared that what we do with our brain trauma patients, and they came up afterwards and says, you have to share this story. I was getting referrals from people from all over the country coming in through resources that I'd done through my own research to find out what to do, and then finding out how much chiropractic was powerful in traumatic brain injury recovery. So we shared this story, and he says, you've got to put this into something so you can share with other people. So this was 15 years ago. So we've been doing our Better Brain Academy with our patients. We do testing, all these different things. Even if you want to stave off Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, there's a lot of things you can do now to see what your risk factors are and what you should be doing. We take a team approach in the Better Brain Academy. It's their thinking, their eating, their adjustments, and their movement. So we look at all those processes. If they've got stinking thinking, they're not going to get better. If they don't think they're going to get better, they won't. So it's important for us to put that hope and that faith in our patients that they will get better. And so when we do this with our patients, it's, uh, it's amazing because um, every one of the tests and scores, people get better, they, their memory gets better because they're looking at their brain. I did a survey with patients and, and I said, so what are you doing for your brain health? They said, I don't know, what can you do? So people are, it is a buzzword. I mean, like I said, we've been doing this 15 years, now it's a really big word in chiropractic, but it's chiropractic that makes the difference. So if we look at when we're making an adjustment, if you want to be a champion, a champion chiropractor, a champion at some sport or martial arts or golf or whatever, you've got to have certain rituals. You see the, the Hall of Famers do something that they have as a ritual. Now, I've been involved with martial arts for over 30 years. And so before you, you do martial arts, the honor, the respect of bowing into the mat, you never walk onto the mat and just go, hey, let's spar. You just don't do that. You actually have to make sure that you are uh, respecting what you do. So you have to be present. When you step on the mat, you don't think about what just happened, that you got almost hit by somebody that was texting, or that you got in a fight with somebody, or that you didn't get your breakfast that morning, or whatever drama that you might come. You have to leave it at the door. We leave it at the door. When I built my office 35 years ago, it says expect a miracle today right above the door. It's amazing how many people don't even see that until all of a sudden they have a miracle. They, it's like, when did you put that sign up? Mm, 35 years ago? <laughs> we people have scotomas. We need to adjust them. We need to wake them up to make sure that they are continuing to heal.